Welcome to the 29th beginning tutorial on CSS. Today we're going to add special effects. So first let's open up our web page and let's take a look at the source. And this is where we added that anchor element to add a link to our shark HTML page in the last video. And so we're going to go ahead and add some special effects to this A element. So let's do that. Uh, let's open up the web page first though. And we'll scroll down here. Now every day when we go to websites and we click on links, most of the links that you click will have CSS special effects. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you hover over the link, sometimes the link will change color, uh, it will be highlighted, or there will be an underline over it. And then if you click this link and leave this page, and then later on come back to this page, you'll notice that the link changes color to tell you that you've already been to that link. Sometimes it changes gray or purple. And so that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to add some special effects to this link. So let's go ahead and close out our web page. And let's open up our famous style sheet. And let's scroll down here. And we'll add some new code as we always do at the bottom of the page. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the code because I already typed it out. And as always, I will explain it to you. And so these are the three new rules that we're adding. And you're going to take a look at this and, and go, whoa, what is this? Well, I'll explain it all. Now, these are called pseudo classes. Now, don't get worried about that right now. I will explain those in a few minutes. But let's take a look. This is the first rule that we set. And here is the anchor tag. Now, what's different is we're putting in a colon here. We haven't done that before, and that identifies this as a pseudo class. And again, I'll explain what a pseudo class is in a minute. Now, this represents a state, and what we're doing here is basically saying, hey, we want this link to be blue when nothing has happened to that link, right? And that's what's happening right now. It's always blue. So we're not really doing anything different here. Now, if we go down to our next rule, this is going to be the visited color. And this is actually a gray. We're going to use a hex code here. So I put in a gray. So when we click on our link in our web page and we come back to it, the link will turn gray. That's all this does. And then there's this third rule right here, which is hover. And this is kind of a neat one. So when we hover over our link now with the mouse, the color of the text now will change. And I think this is like an orange color. And you'll see that in a moment. Now the question you might ask is, why can't I dump all of this into one rule? And that's a good question. And the answer is, these are states. Think of them like states. And we really don't want all of these states in one rule because they would all happen at the same time. And that defeats the purpose. We only want this in one state at a time. It's kind of like the yin and the yang of the universe. It can only be one at any given time. Or think of it like you're in a mental state. You can either be happy, you can be angry, you can be sad, but you can't be all three at the same time. And that's kind of what's going on here. We don't want all three of these displayed at the same time. We only want one of them displayed at the same time because that's the given state it's in at that time. So that's why we will separate these and not dump them all into one rule. And you want them in this order too for this to work good. So you can actually save and reuse this code for your future web pages. You want the link first, the visited second, and the hover third. Always keep it in this top-down order and it'll work very nicely for you. So let's go ahead and save our style sheet and let's go to our web page. And now let's go down here and you'll notice now when we hover over the link, the link is now orange. And so the hover state is getting activated. When the mouse goes to another section of the page, it returns to the other state, the link state, which is blue. So this is letting us know, hey, you're hovered over this link. So let's click on it and we'll go to our shark page. Great. Now let's go back to our page, open it up, act like we're a user here. And look, we've got our new state. It's gray. And so that is the visited CSS rule that we set. And we said, hey, turn this gray to let the user know you've already been there. So there you see all three states that this link can be in. And again, you can reuse this code for your web pages that you designed. Okay, so let's close this out. Now, I want to explain again pseudo classes. Now, you might be going, well, what's going on here? Well, I don't know if you noticed, but we never put a class in our HTML. Let's go open up our HTML here. We didn't put any class here. Everything else we've had to put classes, right? Or styles. And that's why it's called a pseudo class. 
you do not have to actually specify a class in the HTML. The, the browser just knows to go ahead and style this, this A element automatically. And so that's why it's called a pseudo class. It operates like a class, but it's not really a CSS class in the way we think of it because we don't have to put anything in our HTML. And again, a pseudo class is identified by this colon right here. Now, if we took that colon out, we'd have all kinds of problems because then it wouldn't realize it's a pseudo class and it would probably be looking for some sort of class in the uh, in the HTML. Okay, and as always, I will post this uh, style sheet on the message board so you guys can go ahead and use it. So I will see you guys in the next video.